Welcome to the Books, Beards, Booze podcast, where we talk books, drink booze, and have beards. All right. As always, I am Bob of Tales by Bob. And I'm the ass of the podcast, Derek, from, I don't know, somewhere today. I don't know, I'm a little thrown off. So. That's fair. We are both adjusting to new shifts at work, and it's kind of fucking with us a little bit. More than a little bit, yeah. More than a little bit. But, I don't know, I think it's going to work out well. So, uh, as we have previously stated, we're kind of doing a new format now where we just do a deep dive on one topic. But, uh, I know a few people have been like, oh, well, we kind of like the news. Well, we're not getting rid of the news. We're just kind of, we will relay news to you as it comes to us, more or less, rather than going out and hunting down a bunch of news. And this week... Uh, here's, here's the news. Johnny Walker is releasing a (laughs) 50-year-old blended whiskey, which is kind of a, like, that's a bold choice. Like, well, because it, like, like when I was talking to Chris about it, he's like, it's a blended whiskey. Like, typically, like, a lot of times blended whiskeys, you is cheap stuff. Like, you don't typically see hyper expensive blended whiskey. They do exist. They do exist. I'm not trying to say that just because it's blended, it's shit. That's not what I'm trying to say at all. It's just unusual for these really aged whiskeys to be blended. That's that's unusual. For that age, but that age in and of itself is rare. True. Um... They're only making a hundred bottles of it, uh, and it's blended from whiskey from six distilleries that all existed during the lifetime of the label's founder, which was John Walker. Um, but five of them are now closed. Uh, just like twenty-five years ago, I think, as these places were closing, the the these people were like saving like oh well shit let's save let's hold some of this back and do we'll do some we'll, we'll we don't know what we're going to do with it yet but we'll do fucking something with it uh the flavor profile is described as luscious black currants and citrus giving way to rich creamy dark chocolate and a long gentle and warming finish with cooling menthol and subtle smokiness which, if I could have sex with a play, flavor profile, it'd be that one. Uh, it, probably. I, I, I don't know if my kink is black currants, but maybe, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm down to try it. You yeah, know? I'm sure you would. <laughs> yeah. Um, what would it cost to try it, Bob? All right. So here's the best part. The best part of this bit of news was when I was telling Derek about. It, I was like, dude, just guess. Guess how much you think it is. Ask Chris the same question. Uh, After a prolonged Chris, pause. Chris was like, uh, what, I don't know, what, like $3,000 a bottle? And I laughed in his lightly bearded face. <laughs> Just laughed. <laughs> laughed at him and called him a naive little Scotch drinker. Um, Derek, however, guessed it spot fucking on. <laughs> and I was just like, when he's like, blah, blah, blah. I was like, I just looked at him like... I just turned my phone around and showed him the headline where it said, basically, Johnny Walker is releasing a $25,000 bottle of whiskey. Which was hilarious because I was sitting there thinking, like he asked me and I, there was a prolonged moment of thought and I did some calculations and just said, I don't know, twenty five grand. Yeah, yeah. Which we are right now drinking uh, Four Roses single barrel still. We've uh, we've almost killed this bottle. We're getting real low on it. Yeah. Um. And this was forty three dollars a bottle. Uh. I was telling some uh, friends of mine early, when I was getting fitted for the tux earlier today. Uh, they were like, "Oh, what are you going to talk about on the podcast today?" And I was like, "Oh, well, uh, here's the news that we're going to talk about." And they're like, "Oh, so because you y'all's listenership, y'all are they're going to send y'all a bottle, right?" Oh yeah. And I was like, "Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, 100%. that's definitely what's as happen. one of the top ten podcasts that covers books, beards, and booze in the state of Alabama. Yeah, I feel like we definitely rate a twenty five grand bottle oh, of fucking whiskey. Hundred percent. Um, <laughs> but, but since we're talking about uh, fancy whiskeys, 
Uh, after this today, I'm going to a friend's house for a whiskey tasting. He spent a not insignificant amount of money on whiskey. And we will be... What all are you going to be trying? This, oh, Talisker? I'm looking up this. Okay. We will be trying uh, Talisker 10, uh, Suntory, uh, which one? Toki. Which, that's a Japanese whiskey. Yep. Uh, so you don't know anything about um, that. Um, and then one of his friends is also bringing Hibiki. Which is another Japanese whiskey, yep. which you also don't know anything uh-huh. about. Uh-huh. Fuck yourself. Um, then Glenn Fittich 14, uh, Monkey Shoulder, Buffalo which Trace. Which you've had Monkey Shoulder, Yes, right? I have. I think I've had Buffalo Trace, too, but I can't remember. Yeah. And then Maker 46. Okay. I do like Makers. I haven't had Makers 46. So. Neither I don't know. If I have, uh, I don't remember. Brandon Ambassador Ryan, when you hear this, was that bottle? Did you have a bottle of 46 at your. Looks like this. I mean, you just have the 46 on it. Yeah, I want to say he might have had that. Maybe that. Maybe he had some of that and I tried it. I can't remember now. Um, yeah. I don't know either, but it's a, a, a pretty significant. Oh, yeah. Uh, That's like yeah. probably like three, $400 worth of liquor. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, a little jealous. Uh, I'll I, uh, I'll jot down my notes at God, least talking God, about wish, what my favorites are. I wish I remembered. Uh, one of the groomsmen at the tux fitting, he pulled out a flask. I think it was a McClellan. Um, but I can't remember. What, he told me what it was, <coughs> but uh, I just I didn't care. If someone had to be a flask. I was going to drink out of it. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the end of that story. A buddy of mine hit me up. Uh, he tried um, McCallan something or another. I forget which. This weekend, he liked it, and he tried something else that I'm blanking on the name of. Then he had another, uh, like, I think Jameson Black Label or something like that. Yeah. And he raved he liked about Jameson. that. He loves it. I would like, if we could get, like, a, a sample set of a bunch of Jamesons, like, mm-hmm. if they made, like, a boxed mini set. Like, Jack does that. I yeah. wonder if Jameson does that. Where I know it would be more expensive, but where we could get, like, four different Jamesons. Not, I would not love, much more expensive. I would love to try it. Um... Last little bit of news. So uh, those long-term fans of the podcast will know that we we, we kind of got our start doing what we called our short read, Tall Glass, where we would kind of really focus on a short story every week, talk about it. And then we kind of realized that uh, people don't have time to necessarily read a story every week. But we are going to do one a month now. That is the plan. The last episode of every month, so the last Sunday of every month, you need to have read... The Given Short Story, which this month is Fandom for Robots by Vina Jaiman Prasad. I'll put a link up on our every place where you can go read it. It's completely free to read uh, short story. And it was nominated for the Hugo Award for Short Story. And having read it and having read the other two, I would have given this the award. I love this story so you, fucking much. More than the one... That well, I'll be like if I'm being if if I'm being truly it honest, fun, not it was so much more fun. But it it was good. It yeah. has it has a it has a little little bit of punch to it. It doesn't that have, last story. It does not right. have as much punch as Carnival Nine. God, I'll get dude. I'll I'll say that. God, this story is so enjoyable. I assume it's up my alley from uh, what you mentioned to me. Yes. Okay. Yes, it's gonna be great. So I please everyone go out and read that. You have until. November 25th. I actually would request that you definitely read it because I'm going to read it. And if Bob lied to me, I'm going to tear it and him to shreds. Dude, if you don't like this story, I I'm, just don't, I'm you don't firing you from me. the podcast. You don't understand yeah, me. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't even know who you are. are. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, please check that out. All right. So, anyway, let's dive into our topic. This, right. this week, what we decided to do is I know last week we talked about it, and I've been doing it on my blog for a little bit. But we kind of want y'all to understand where we are coming from when we review books. And I know we've talked about it a little bit, but we kind of, how we break down books is by what we call the four pillars. And someone probably has a better name for that, or someone's probably already used that name or whatever. But we just kind of call them the four pillars. And it's every book, we kind of judge it by the plot, the characters, the world building, and the prose. And by prose, we mean like the actual craft of writing like how well they wrote it um 
And so we decided that we were going to take five books that both of us have read recently, give our ratings, and kind of explain a little bit why. So that then in the future, when you hear us talk about these things, you if you hear me talk about plot, like I really like the plot, you know I'm very much a plot guy. And so you... And if you're a plot person, then you'll maybe take me more to heart than Derek. Which, I mean, you just should anyway, because Derek's probably wrong. But, no. Um, but so anyway, the five books are... We'll, we'll just do... We'll, we'll, we'll surprise you. Here's the thing. Yeah. Break it down. We're doing this on a five-star list. Yes. Or a five-star Everything's rating. rated one to five. What does one, two, three, four, and five stand for? Okay. Three means it's... Average. It's per. It's not good. It's not bad. It's perfectly serviceable. It. I would not put it down. You know, like it. It may not be flowery. It may not be exceptional. But it's a good. It's a. It's a solid read. All right. So a five is the pinnacle of the craft in that given category, and a one is this is real fucking bad at what they're trying to do here. Um, a two would be. Uh, it's pretty bad. Probably would put it down, depending on all the factors. And a four is they did a really good. They did a good job at what they were trying to do. So, Lies of Loch Lamora. We're doing that. Oh, so we're just starting with that. Okay. Yes. Um. Yeah, we're gonna start with, because that's how it is on my sheet. Okay. So that's why we're <laughs> we're going by my sheet, not your sheet. Yeah, of course. Right. Lies of Loch Lamora. Plot. What'd you give it? Five. I gave it a five as well. And so, a little spoiler, at the end we're going to talk about which, like, we're going to pick each of these four pillars and pick a book that perfectly exemplarizes that aspect. But we said, like, we were going to try and not use the books on this list. But I was hard-pressed to think of a better book than Lies of Loch Lamora for plot. Yeah, spoiler, I didn't do. Uh, uh, I just used him. <laughs> I used Lies the, the, of Loch Lamora. But it... I'll, say I'll try this. and think of another one. Well, until no, I'll say anything, this. But. It's not entirely fair to you. Well, no, it is fair. But, like, all right, so the reason that Lies of Locke Lamore is so good is because it is somewhat of a heist mystery type deal. Mm-hmm. And those plots, by their nature, are more intricate. Mm-hmm. And so, like, if I... The... the It does... It's the best heist novel I have read by far. Uh, the plot is so intricate without being. It's the perfect confusing. amount. Yeah, it's intricate but not confusing. Like you're not left like trying to be. Oh shit, man! I can't remember what was going on here. Oh my god, what 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 what? No, it's it's perfect. So yeah, I gave it a five as well. Yeah, it's because it's the correct choice. Yes, characters. Uh, for character and lies, I put a four. All right, I gave it a four two five. Um, and. I will say that I think part of my 425 was just how likable the characters were. Mm -hmm. I'll admit that, like, his characterization was solid. I don't know that it was exceptional, but just how much I liked the characters, I think probably fed into why I gave it a slightly higher score than you. Well, I just... uh, I don't do the half points or quarter points. Oh, man, I, I get crazy with it. I'll give up. Point four oh three think, uh, nine seven if I want. There's like one thing that I yeah. gave. No, two things that I did a point because I'm yeah. just like I'm not about that life. But yeah. here's so for character, the reason character is so high on this is because each of the characters is a very distinct, different character. True. They are not. If you saw them speaking, or if you just read their words, there is a pretty good chance you would not mistake them for somebody else. Yeah. Also, each of them stay consistent to what and who they are as a character yep. over the course of the story. The only reason it's not perfect is because while I liked all the characters, I did not... Basically, because I knew what my five was yeah. and I was comparing Well, I mean, them. like, it's good characterization. It's, it's very good, but it's, I... Was it, I, for example, yeah. if bad things happen to these people, <clears throat> I don't cry. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that, that's, that's, a, that's the that's yeah, like the that's litmus. A, of, a five is if something happens to these characters, I get extremely yeah, upset. That's fair. When bad things happen to these characters, I'm bummed. Yeah, that was my. I was definitely. But bummed. I but I wasn't. Uh, yeah. 
like what we'll talk about later. Yeah. World building. World building? I also... I think I also gave it... Let me see. World, no, world, world building's a five. All right. I gave it a four, seven, five. Yeah. Um, because it's good. It was really good world... It was almost perfect world building. I will readily admit that my... The reason it didn't get a five is because of the later books. Well, I'm only doing it on the line well, of no, and it's, Yeah, no, that no, that's fair. Like, I, like I'm admitting that, like, I'm colored on this because okay. you know it, they're not coming back. Well, it's because he that. spent this. It's the amount of time he spent on world building. Mm-hmm. If we're if not in later books, back. if we're not coming back to this, it was wasted space. Like, it was great. It was it was exceptional world building. Some of the best I've ever seen. But if we're not coming back to it, it's too. It was too much space dedicated to a city that we're not going to come back to. If in book four they come back to Kamor, then it goes to a. Five. I strongly disagree because it wouldn't have been wasted space because pretty much every part of the thing that he used to describe, like everything that they used for world building in the city, was a part of the plot. Well, it's more than just this is. So it needed to be in there. My so thing is like the social interact, like the the structure of the gangs and stuff like that, and like talking about the elder glass mm-hmm. to a point. But he he spends too much time talking about various elder glass st- structures that you don't need to talk about them at that length. Kind of deal. It's kind of where I'm at. Like, so it's just like I enjoyed the world building, <coughs> but. If we're not going to come back to this city, well, I don't. I don't need to like the the what was it the garden that Jean practices yeah. in, super cool, but the amount of description that went into that when functionally we're only there for two scenes. No, because it's relevant to the entire backdrop of the world. Well, it, again, like that, which look, is going to come not, into play. In you're, you're arguing me like I gave this like a a yeah. three. I gave it a four seven five. I'm just saying that just, if if in series like series wise, if if we don't come back to Kamor, I would rather have tightened up the description a bit. So because for me, plot is most important. Plot is the number one most important thing of every book, and I will sacrifice everything else on the altar of plot. So I would rather the book was a little tighter to get the plot moving forward. That's why it doesn't get a five. If, again, I, if, if it becomes relevant, cool, but it was a lot of description for a city that seemingly we're never going back to. I see, oh, okay, but I disagree with you fundamentally on the fact that you're judging it by not on being a single book, because this was supposed to well, be a single book. Yeah, no, that, that, that's that's fair. That's all that's I was fair. saying. Yeah, no, that's that's fair. But anyway, if, you if I was judging it just by the one book... Yeah, it'd probably be a five. Because it I mean, it's damn near a five, exception. anyways. Pros. Uh, pros, I put four. I gave it a four two five. It's like flowery, basically, but not it, super. Yeah, it, basically, I fit, it's impressive. It, th- this comes back to the world building a little bit. Sometime, the reason I didn't go like a four five is sometimes his descriptions of places go a little long. Like, it's he's. To me, it felt at times like he was trying to be a little too flowery, but he was. It's, he didn't do it poorly. Mm-hmm. It, that's just a personal. Like again, that is a we're, preference. We're doing this mm-hmm. so y'all can understand our preferences. Like to me, it's a personal preference. I would have rather there be a little less description of in certain scenes. Like he <laughs> he spends an inordinate amount of time describing, like he describes the five spires kind of deal. Like, at length. Like, at fucking length. And really, we're only ever in two of them. And so, like, he could have dialed it back a little bit there. But, like, prose-wise, Scott Lynch is above, well above average in the fantasy genre. Mm -hmm. I would put him in the top five pros. He's very good. Top five. Uh, Kings of the Wild. Uh, Kings of the Wild plot, yeah. I gave it a three. I thought it was very good, but very straightforward. I gave it a four, um, just because uh, I I enjoyed the plot. Just the whole 
old folks getting back together. You don't mm-hmm. see that a lot, and I thought it was done well. Yeah. Um, so I give I gave it four. I enjoyed it. Characters. Characters got a four. I gave it a four seven five, and that was almost entirely based on slow hand. <laughs> um, I will say this <coughs> did did an exceptional job of characterization on the kind of the main characters, but at the same time did a little. I would say did above average on the main characters, but maybe a slightly below average on anyone who wasn't a main character to a degree. Is kind of <clears throat> kind of my just impression of it. Uh, my but thing is to, to, were... to me the characters is what carried that book. <clears throat> yeah, I think I might actually change this to a five by my own reckoning because when something bad happened, I was genuinely upset. Oh yeah. Um, the, yeah, the it, scene between Ganelon and uh, Slowhand when he was talking about him being a bad person, that really, yeah. I was very sad the, about that. The reason I docked points on plot, really, was because there weren't real repercussions. Like, it's the biggest critique of this book is there's not a ton of <laughs> real repercussions in the book kind mm-hmm. of deal. Like, anytime something bad happens, they kind of fix it, fix it on the spot. And on the spot, most of the time. Yeah. Other than Gregor and Dane, uh, there's not a lot of long term, like in mm-hmm. the book stuff. So like the plot wise, eh, you know. But the characters, God, man, the characters. I, it's rare for me to be able to remember <laughs> all the characters' names. Also, I think it's I, important I to can. keep in mind that I, I think I was wrong on characters. I think characters are five. Because I cared about what happened to him, and going back to my criteria of if they were just talking, I wouldn't need to see their names to know who's yeah. talking. Fair. Very fair. Because all of them are very distinctive. World building. World building, uh, I gave it a three. I, I gave it a four on here, but really, I gave it a three, seven, five. It's, it's interesting, but incredibly sparse. Like, I understand, like, the parts that it gave me I was interested in. But there was very little depth. Uh-huh. It was very surfacey. It was. Uh, I think I, I'll agree with you there. It was a very. When we get to my ultimate world building one, this Kings of the Wild does not have what that book does. Mm-hmm. It has good world building, but it it's surface level. Like yeah. I do appreciate that he used some creatures that we don't normally see. Yeah, like I did Ed, like that. And Edder Cap, stuff like mm-hmm. that. That is very cool. But and the Heart no... Wild is neat, but it's it was too slapdash and chaotic. But we we have very little information about the cultures of any of the cultures that are that yeah. we meet. We have yeah. very little mention of actual uh, the ways some of the monsters interact with each other. Yep. Or the cultures that they have, stuff yeah. like that. No. Yeah. So. Uh, World Blazing 375. Just, it was interesting, but it's surface level. Mm-hmm. Pros. Uh, four. I gave it a four as well. Yeah. Uh, it Strong was... four. When I read, yeah. you know, not the most amazing, but also, yeah. there's some, some zingers in there. Oh, yeah. Just... No, there was some great stuff. Yeah. Goblin Emperor. Uh, Goblin Emperor, when we go with plot, plot. three, again, it was a... Vi- it's a very straightforward plot. I understand I, what the plot is. There was not too many twists and turns. Yeah. And but it was interesting to experience. Yeah. Plot was not what carried that mm. book, really. Um I don't even I gave it like I I wrote down four, but really it's a three five. My thing I don't once we've we'll, the, we'll talk about it in a second. Let's yeah. do the rest of the uh, plot I give plot a three five. Characters a four. I gave a four. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was kind of annoyed by the character at first, yeah. but it it did end up with him tur- like yeah he, watching him. Change, there was some really good character growth, yeah. you know, and that that's important. A lot of books you don't ever see any which character is growth. So annoying. And so character, I didn't necessarily like Maya, but the character. Well, it, I really didn't like. I just Maya felt really bad up. for him. I have a I have and a I thing. Like, what are you doing? I talked about this in the road, uh, not the road, uh, although it would kind of apply to the road, but uh, in the ritual, I don't like books where people are really handicapped for large periods of the book, 
And like normally that's like, oh, this person's stuck in a desert with no water mm-hmm. for like a third of the book and they're just struggling for a third of the book. I hate reading that. And he well, he was not he was not he stuck was, in well, the desert. So here's the problem. He wasn't competent at anything. Yeah. The things that he was com- well here's the thing, it turned he, out he was competent at something, but because of the way he was his perception of the world was, yeah. he couldn't recognize that what he thought people were thinking about him. A lot of them weren't right, and that, that's my thing. Like he spent like he spent book. so much of the book handicapped. A lot of it because he and, just thought that, that, he that was. yeah, and that annoyed like that yeah. kind of it kind well, of annoys it, me. Well, because he's doing every he's not doing anything correctly. Yeah, he's not he, he's not super likable other than you feeling bad for him. So you have no you can't empathize or extol his virtue in any yeah. way. So there's nothing to latch on to. Yeah. So, I mean, it... it but it I, grows. Yeah. It, and you realize it, what's going on. And, yeah. and you kind of understand why he's so timid and like being brutalized right. by the guy that raised him and shit like that. Yeah. But anyways, I thought it was a four. It was yeah, solid. four. I agree with four. World building. Uh, world building? I give it a three. I give it a 3.5. Okay. Like, the reason I gave it a 3.5... There wasn't a ton of it. No. But I wanted well, more. Cor- correct. It was... It, there was a good bit of world building in a very narrow slice of this world. Yeah. And that's why I give it a three. Like, if that amount of world building was spread over a city, like Liza Locke Lamora, <laughs> it would have got higher. But it's... It's a good bit of world building, but it's really like it's the world building of functionally like twenty rooms, you know. Like, well, and so the, it's it's done well, but I it's don't not necessarily think that's fair because the place that he was is an entire city. Like, it's that's how big the tower. Right. Is. Yeah, but like, I mean, because of who he is, he's really only yeah in like a very limited number of these rooms. Yeah. So, and like, there is a culture to the palace and whatnot. Like, I. So that's why it's a three. Like it's it's well done, but like it's basically like Derek. I want you to write me the world's best essay on that light socket over there, and like okay, you can write wow me, but... wow me, but it's still about a light socket. Like they did a good job, but it was a very small painting. This was one of the times where. The answer is actually three, but I gave it a three point five, just because oh, the, I enjoyed it. The main reason that it gets a three over three point five is the fucking names. I liked the names because they were so weird. They were. I. I'll be honest with you. Like you just saw it and knew what. I don't. They I don't want. I don't want the fantasy names to be Jimmy and Jim Bob yeah, and but Joe. You don't want Edward. Yeah, man. I just don't want that. Yeah, I just don't want, yeah, I just don't want that. I, uh, you can do fantasy names that aren't re- goddamn ridiculous. <laughs> that was like, I've never read War and Peace, mm-hmm. but I kind of imagine that book was like reading an appendix to War and Peace, where they. So you think it's <laughs> it's it's like trying to keep track of Russian novels? Yeah, Russian was... man. Th- I'll, very I'll say this: they don't. Note. Yeah, Russian novels are fucking stupid. Uh, they're interesting <laughs> books, but if you don't understand the naming conventions, you're fucked. Yeah. And I forgot how they work now, even though I took a class on it. Once well, I was in the class, like every oh, no, this every makes person sense. can wind up with like four or five different names, just mm-hmm. depending. On, yeah, depending fuck. on who's talking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my cousin Brody did a uh, like a two oh, sentence. My. He did a review of that book, oh, and he he basically said because he he says it's by Leo Brostoy. Of course he does. Um. And uh, he said that he's pretty sure that some bros do some bro things in here, but he's not sure because there's like 600 characters that each have like five different names, so he doesn't know who's doing what. That's fair. Um, Secretly, there was only three characters, but it felt <laughs> yeah, like five. Right. Pros. Uh, pros was a three. It was just, it was, I mean, there was I could have four. I really enjoyed it. Um, but I'll say this. I'm also, this is the book that's been the longest since I've read, yeah. so I don't. I just remember really enjoying it, so I could be. Yeah, my. Thing, I could be rating it high. Yeah, I think you are because I went back and read some of it. But here's the thing about it: none of these scores are particularly high, but I enjoyed the book. Right. Not, oh yeah, every one of these books, and we'll we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. All right, Jade City. Jade City plot, plot was three. Yeah. And here's why. Again, 
it was just it, it was incredibly straightforward. It's like these two groups are at war. Other. There are a cup. There are things happening that are throwing things, but there's no, there's not a ton of this comes into there's play not, here. Yeah, there's, there's not no, a lot of depth to there's it. There's not a lot of moving parts other than the characters. Yeah, like other than well, I don't want to. We're, we've done pretty good about not really spoiling stuff. So, other than one traitor getting revealed, there's not a huge amount of intricacy right. to the plot. Right, but yeah. it, but it was it's uh, very serviceable, very solid. It's that's just, why I didn't get below a three. I yeah. don't know. Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah, know. characters. Uh, characters. I gave it a four. Yeah, I gave it a four as well. Because again, I can differentiate the characters yeah. almost without having to see the names. I but can none, none of it. Well, I think part of that problem is there may have been to to get that higher, there would have had to been less viewpoint characters, and we would have had to spend more time with each character for them to get higher. Yeah. I think is like there was nothing there was nothing wrong with the characterization. I just didn't get enough time with any one character to see enough growth to rate it higher than a four. If that makes I, sense, you know what I think my problem was is that with the exception of one character. I didn't really see growth. Most of them just were kind of who they were over the course of the entire thing. Their positions, yeah. Their, I saw. I, I their feel positions like, uh, changed, but they didn't change. Uh, which was kind of. The I problem. feel like I, you see a bit of growth. Like Shay's the one you see the most with. Mm-hmm. You see some more with Andon. Uh, Do you though? I, th- he I think so. I, well, he doesn't unless well, you know, I, don't, I count break as growth. Uh, it, it's not growth. It's like negative growth, but it was. Change, change, uh, but the 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 horn brother, uh, Hilo, Hilo. I towards the end, I think you start to see who I think he's going to be in the second book. Which I, I think, I, I my I thing think. is, is here's the thing, I don't think he changed at all, but I think he figured out a way to make that work for him. Is what I think it was. Which to a degree is you could argue is a type of <laughs> not change but growth, like. Realizing you are who you are and making it work is not change, but is growth. Like yeah, if you I, realize, man, I'm well, a piece my of thing shit. Is he but... was never trying to be something that he wasn't. I think that what happened was that Shay kind of helped yeah. him figure out. I how will. To... I'll say this, like, quick ten second spoiler. If you haven't read it, don't listen to the next six seconds. Go no 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 no. I would like to see a full book where he was the horn. Yeah, yeah. I just like him. He yeah. loves best. So. Uh, world building. Uh, world building. Oh, geez, four. I gave it a four as well. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard to do. Uh, this is something that's kind of come up a bit. Um, like if it's set in like the modern world, it's hard to do not... exceptional world building because to like. And I realize this. Is, this is not actually our world yeah, because it's, it's not... but it fundamentally like it's. It's our world with some names changed. With different countries. Yeah. And so, like, it's basically... The, my read on it is... This it's, level of it's, technology. It's Spain, China, and the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Or, or Taiwan or Hong Kong. Like, an island nation in the Pacific with Spain and China. Or maybe the U.S. and China. Like, that's kind of just my general read on it. So, it... It... It's hard to do exceptional world think, building more when Britain most than China. Yeah, that's fair. It's hard to do exceptional world building when the bulk of the world has been built for you. Like yeah. basically putting new names on a couple of countries. It like I'm, and I'm not but, saying that's exactly what she did here, yeah. but the 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 reason she gets a four, not a three, is because the culture of Kane Loon is awesome. awesome it is like she but it's very much like there's not a lot like it's basically it's a city in the pacific you know like a asian culture in the pacific so that you you kind of have that expectation you know what to kind of expect from that but she does so much good the lantern men and things like that like explaining all, why yeah, things are the way they are that's, the gods that that, that is ex- like in the religion I don't think the religion gets enough respect in this oh, book. The religion's so great. So cool. Um and so it I think the, that's I, why she gets a four and not a five. Like the culture oh, of Jade yeah. users, just like the They're, idea of coming out of it, the mountain. It's basically the same thing as Goblin Emperor. Yeah. It's like Goblin Emperor 
Like, granted, that was created out of whole cloth, but you only focused on one thing. She had the tapestry woven for her, Uh but then she was allowed to go in and make all the highlights and make it look cool, and that's what she did. Uh Like, she took more or less Earth culture and took it to 11, and it was great. So that's why she gets a 4, not anything higher, is because Earth is Earth. She didn't have to make the base coat. She's coming in and adding the highlights, which they're incredible fucking highlights. Don't get me wrong. They're fucking badass. Pros. Uh, Three. I didn't really think Yeah, I was not. She's the Mario Puzo of fantasy. Which you haven't read Mario Puzo, but he wrote The Godfather. Uh This book is The Godfather meets a Bruce Lee film. Like, but at the same time, I don't read a book like this for flowery fucking prose. This is a two mafia houses, more or less, fighting each other. I'm not coming into this. I don't want to be wowed Here's by the, the intricacy of the the description of the blood falling in the death scene. The interesting part of this book is the characters and... I'm not saying that there's not room to do okay. do good writing. I'm just saying I don't come into a book about expecting a expecting that. I don't come into a book about a war between two criminal families wanting name of the wind pros. You well, know. And so like that's why it I, I don't care that it's a three. It's good. It's good. It doesn't wow there me, was a but I'm not of looking scenes that were for okay. It. But like there's my thing is pros isn't only about being flowery with description, it's also the way the way I look at it is prose is is your your being the director of the book. There yeah. are better quote unquote shots that she could have presented okay. that would have spiced up and made it a more tense or uh, just a better story instead of just coming That's directly fair. out with everything. That's fair. Like. At this point, it was kind of like we had a set shot the entire time. Yeah. Instead of, you know, moving up from the floor at a time or following from behind somebody at a time. I got you. Stuff I like you. that. Yeah, that's fair. But even, even so, it was still definitely good. I mean, yeah. All right. Yeah. Dune. Plot. Three. I gave it a four. Um, I, I thought it was, again, we've, we've had our discussion yeah. about it, but... I, to me, was, I view it as the same thing as Jade City. Mm-hmm. It's fundamentally two houses yeah. don't like each other, but there's a lot more twists and turns. There's there's a little, there's a lot more elements to it, and I realize to me, I this is I love this book so much, and I attribute that to the plot. Really, okay. like I I love the plot. So I it was again to to me it was a pretty straightforward these two houses are against each other they plot on each other and he goes and finds allies and then comes yeah. back like it was yeah i mean that that is stripped down to its bare yeah, that yeah. is it uh there were some Which twists is, and is, turns, is, well i mean yeah. there's some twists and turns in yeah. kings of the wild where things go wrong yeah. and they have to go and do other stuff but i still thought it was a fairly basic it's not like uh for Juan example, <laughs> well, well, yeah, for one, I was trying to think of one that wasn't as strong as that because I think it's close to strong, but not really like Stormlight Archive, yeah. like just a, a single book of that. Like, that's fairly straightforward, but there are things that are happening that you're like, you know, that this is the thrust you, of the story. You need, you, need and then to, things, you need to read Warbreaker, and then things happen, and you're like, wait, wait a second, well, I, I didn't even know we were going in the, that direction, yeah. but now that's relevant. That's fair. But, anyways, characters, uh, characters, I gave it a one. <laughs> I give it a three. I don't think there's anything wrong with the characters, but I don't think... The the answer for me is actually two. One is too strong. I just did that to fuck with you. The reason I give it, like, three, they kind of... There are some characters that I will admit are leaden, but then there are some characters, granted they don't get as much screen time, that are very vibrant. Um, So I just give it a three. Uh, The characters that are leaden, a lot of them have very good reasons for being such... And I realized while that's not enjoyable, I'm just kind of, I'm just, I, don't know, I give it a three. Mm-hmm. So, world building. Uh, 4.25. I gave it, I actually gave it a five, but I think really four or five, really, like four I, or five. Look, like, I'm, I'm, what... I'm giving part, like, again, this is one of those, like, other books is bleeding through like 
there there's so much depth to this, but it's not it's not really fair for me to give it a five based on world building that comes later. That so doesn't happen four, in the book. four or five. I give it a four or five. I think that it was better than some things, but was also pre- pretty limited. But it was a thing that if I had more of, I would be interested. The in, the the, the reason I give it as high as that is it feels real. It feels lived in, and to me, that's the like Kings of the Wild. It. It's, it's good world building while at the same time not really feeling like people lived in. It. in. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't have a sense of age to it. Mm-hmm. Like it seems like I'm describing you this world, but this world could have been created five minutes ago, kind of deal. It doesn't feel yeah. there's no like age a, mm-hmm. to it. Dune has a real feel of age to it. It feels lived in, it feels real. And that's why I rate it high. Like even if he even if it didn't do a ton of Describing all these different social groups or this, that, and the other, just how real it felt is why I rate as high as. To me, that's the best part of world building is if it feels they take you to a completely made up place and it feels genuine, that's when you have the best world building. And that's why I rated it as high because it felt genuine, it felt lived in, it felt like it had age and history behind it. So. The weight of history goes a long way. Mm-hmm. Uh, pros. Three. I got a three seven five. Uh, it's slightly better than average. I give it a three five. I, I give it's it slightly th- better than average, but it's. I give it a three because there is some flourish, but the flourish in a lot of situations leaves it vague to the point of me having to double read. Yeah. So the step forward that it gets for being a little flowery, it gets takes back, back because I'm no, having to go, wait a second. Now. That's fair. Because I'm like, ah, this, like it makes sense after I think about it long yeah. enough. But if I'm just trying to read a book, then it doesn't yeah. necessarily That's fair. fit. That's fair. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's dive in real quick, kind of make this a little short. What book do you think best emphasizes plot? You said Lies Lock and More. And uh, I, yeah. I, agree, I agree with that, like... All right, it does the best job. I think it benefits from its genre we to a degree. I, I would say, uh, like, I kind of like the plot of the first Mistborn pretty good. Uh, that was pretty good. But again, though, that's a heist novel. Yeah, that's, that's why cool. I that's did. a heist novel. Yeah. I think heist novels, mysteries, plot oh. is to what carries you to a degree. Uh, I picked Broken Empire trilogy oh. as plot. Um, I know it's not one book, but the plot over all three books. The payoff at the end. Seeds are set in book one that pay off in book three. The Broken Empire trilogy, I think, is the best plot in modern fantasy. Lies Locked Mora is a better one book plot. I haven't read it, but if we're basing on like payoffs of things, then it pays off in the most amazing way at the end how many uh, okay well it's three books we can't anyways I'm not, I don't know I'm not gonna I'm not even gonna dream of pretending to even hint at a spoiler because it's that good I well no I was just I was gonna be like well I mean there's like I I read the first one and I thought it was good but I didn't think it was great I loved it it's um, one of my favorite books so and then but see so there's other books that I think have as much intricacy and has the, things that why, pay off on other books. You see, why Broken Empire wins is how big, like the pay, like I love the plot. The plot gets intricate. It especially starts doing a lot of like flashbacky stuff in like later books. Like, oh, let me flashback to this and how it influences this. The second book is like rife with that. Like, let me show you a scene in the modern or in the current timeline. Oh, let me show you a scene back in mm-hmm. the day and how they how they tie into each other. It's fucking amazing. So you get all these little payoffs all throughout, and then at the end you get this one really big payout that payoff that also involves character payoff besides plot payoff. It's fucking magnificent. That's why. That's probably going to be the next thing that I finish that I can shit on in a bonus podcast. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I'll hate you forever. I've gotten. I've picked up two of them while they were on sale on Kindle, yeah. so I just gotta get one more and then I'm gonna reread them. Okay, well, if I didn't go with plot with that, I would go plot with uh, 
You know what? We'll go with the the Word of Radiance. Okay. I was going to say the first one, but I think the second one. I think the second one's a better book. Yeah. Um, characters. Characters. Uh, Assassin's Apprentice. Good choice. Good choice. Uh, the only thing I would potentially say is I think I actually would go with the second book in that series instead of the first. I don't remember them as individual books. I kind of remember um, them as a group. So The but... second book is the one that... Uh, yeah, I think it's okay. the second book. Basically because I care about the character so much that I like wept when bad yeah. things happen. Really, really bad things happened to him. I picked Swords Point mm-hmm. um, because just the characters are all... The characters are all flawed, but they fulfill the promise of that flaw, if that makes sense. In a way. It's like, they're flawed. You see that they're flawed. They're flawed to the point of like, God, I hate that they're flawed in this way. But then they kind of overcome the flaw when it counts kind of deal. And it, there's a lot of character growth in the this. The characters felt real. I, I, I loved it. Mm-hmm. World building. Malzahn. Uh... And I, this is a, yeah, we, I was going to say, we, uh, will, we will start right now and I will say this. Uh, I hate those books. Yeah. But there, no, I, I don't know that you can convince me that this is not the answer. I Here's why I don't think it's the answer. It doesn't feel like there is a absolute fuck ton of world building. I mean, a stupid amount of world building. But I just don't believe that the world still exists. Like you, when Malazan's going on, you have like a dozen people walking around who mm-hmm. could basically destroy the world at any point. And like, I mean, the technically the whole point of the book is this guy who destroyed the world and got punished for it and making it right with him. Like, I, I don't, I don't find. There's a ton of world building. I just don't find the world building believable. It definitely has the age. It has more depth and age to its world building than fucking anything out there. I just don't believe it. I just don't. There's too many fucking godlike powerhouses running around for me to believe that it is the way that it is. Like, I mean, like how how did civilization form? Because you have guys walking around at all times who can basically just destroy anything. Like. Why didn't uh, what is it the Tisti and or what's uh-huh. uh, what's the floating city like Moon Shadow Moon Shadow well, they, they could have just gone around fucking oh there's some humans getting a city together let me just stomp that out because humans are a problem humans are not good for us let me just stomp that out like I I don't know like it's it's good world building by volume I just to me it doesn't make logical sense. Like, it, it definitely has an age. It feels lived in. The reason I can't agree with you is because it doesn't make logical sense to me. Because there's he has too many roaming badasses of, I'm going to just destroy everything. And I, you didn't get deep enough yeah. into it to see a lot of it. But god damn, there's fucking... There's like a hundred people in that book that could probably destroy the fucking world. Well, if they, set, if they set their mind to it. Obviously that they didn't want to. Ugh. I picked Lord of the Rings. That's okay. You're allowed to be wrong. Because Lord of the Rings uh, has, to me, the mo- again, the most important thing is the feeling that's lived in and that has age to it. And when you're reading those books, it feels lived in. It feels real. And it obviously has... It ha- <laughs> you're right. When I'm reading it, it does feel like 40 years <laughs> passes between when Frodo fucking actually leaves, actually gets it- to leave. It feels, I don't know, it feels real, it feels lived in, and that's why I look for world building. And I think it's done the best job. There's a reason it's kind of the influence on everything to a degree. You know, mm-hmm. like it, the world building it did was exceptional. All right, pros. Rothfuss. Rothfuss, I figured you'd say that. I picked uh, Tigana yeah, by Guy Gabriel K. Because uh, it's. But I haven't read that yet. So yeah, that's fair. I, I think I I really do think you'll like it. Uh, I really the, do. There was um, other stuff that uh, the main other choice that I wanted to pick, but I didn't feel comfortable picking because I actually do like it more than I like Rothfuss. Probably is uh, Robert Jordan. 
Okay. But a lot I, of that I is... might would have picked Ursula K. Le Guin. Maybe. Uh, or Margaret Atwood. Those either one of those two would have been in the running, but I think I think I gave okay is the reason I I don't feel one hundred percent confident saying him is because I've only listened to him on audiobook. I haven't physically read, read it. it. Yeah. And I would like to physically I think I have Lines of Alrason on Kindle. So I think I'm gonna read it next and take it from there. The the reason I would pick uh Jordan is because I like the way he wrote. But it has so much to do with characterization that I didn't know if it would count as characterization or if it would count as prose. That's right. Because one of the things that I like the most is every every different character that he writes from their perspective is written in such a way that, again, if you didn't know who was talking, just by looking at the words they use, the way they describe things, you would know who they are. Because when parents do... Them. And because uh, Bob's wrong, uh, when Perrin's doing a thing, everything has to do with forges, wolves, animals, stuff like that. Anytime Rand's doing stuff, he's seeing uh, swordsmen, people yeah. sneaking in the shadow, magic. Anytime it's Matt, he's seeing women drink. Yeah. Like he, every single person that he describes what they're doing. Even the even like the phrases that they say, ha, it, or metaphors that they use in conversation, go back to who they are as a person. Yeah, and I think that that's exceptional. Okay, wrong, but okay. Um, I think right. I, you know I, I'm going to change it to to Jordan. Okay, that's fair. Um, as always, uh, I please go check out our contest that we're running. You can find the video on YouTube that describes how you can enter the contest. Uh, Sadly, haven't had a lot of entries. Uh, we've got a few, but I would like a lot more. The more, the merrier. Uh, as always, please go leave us a review on iTunes. would really like that. Or wherever you're listening to this, if there's a way to leave a review, please leave a review. We'd really like that. Um, check us out on Patreon. We love you. And uh, as always, go forth and grow a great beard.